Welcome to The Taylor James Show, where we pair extraordinary wine with extraordinary musicians. Our special guest is legendary singer and guitarist Bill Henderson. We'll hear how he went from living in a teepee on Salt Spring Island in the 60s to becoming a Canadian rock icon with The Collectors and Chilliwack. But first, to the Coal Harbor Liquor Store to pair the perfect wine to complement Bill's unique talent. All right, so here we are at the Coal Harbor Liquor Store in downtown Vancouver. Excited and thrilled to be in this beautiful store. When I first um, came into the store a few weeks ago, the first thing that stole my heart were the, the guitars on the back wall. And I thought, okay, we have to go and do uh, one of the pairings at this amazing store. So of course, as always, I have Mr. Jeff Hicks, our band sommelier. Hi. And we have the very, very skilled and knowledgeable Evelyn. We're uh, thrilled to be here today and we're going to be pairing Bill Henderson from the band Chilliwack mm -hmm. with your store. He's a, he's a rock star. Icon, legend, yeah. star. Uh, you know, pro. Real pro, and he's, he's been in the business for, I believe been playing over 40 years. Yeah. He still tours mm -hmm. to this day. Um, many, many hit songs. He's a very big part of the music community in Vancouver. He just does a lot of things for yeah. the community um, that's really, really wonderful. But not arrogant, not stuck up, no. not a attitude. In fact, he lives a simple life on a small Gulf island and just loves being part of the fabric of the community. And he's normal, normal guy. You'd never know he, you're in the, in the company of a rock star because he doesn't ever make you feel that way. Right. To know Bill is to love Bill. So you, you and Jeff went through the store and looked at some wine. So do you want to talk about what you might have paired with Bill? Yeah, so we've narrowed it down to three. Um, we've got first the Hester Creek uh, Cabernet Franc. Um, Hester Creek has the oldest Cabernet Franc vines in the Okanagan. Uh, this is one of my favorite bottles of wine in the store. I sell a ton of this. If I could, I would drink <laughs> a lot of this. Um, it's just, it, it's, it's consistent every vintage. You know what you're getting. It's, it's big, it's bold, it's powerful. Sounds it's, like Bill. Sounds like Bill. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's just, it's delicious. Nice. So this is definitely a contender, I think. Ooh, yeah. Great, great. Um, the second one we've chosen is the Great Northern Vineyard Zinfandel. Now that's um, a surprise. I thought, a yeah. Zinfandel. Yeah. Because you don't see a lot of that in BC. Right. No, definitely oh. not. Um, so Great Northern Vineyard is the secondary label to Kettle Valley, uh, which is one of the oldest vineyards in the Okanagan, and they make a ton of wine. Wow. They really know what they're doing, and they really enjoy. You can, you can tell in the wine that they enjoy what they're doing. Right. Um, so yes, the Zinfandel, it's, it's, it's interesting, and... Uh, it's wonderful. Uh, this it's it's like a medium-bodied Zinfandel. So normally you expect to almost chew through a Zinfandel. Um, you don't with this one, but you get all the same uh, wonderful characteristics of you know your American Zins or your uh, Italian Primitivos. Um, so this this was a great surprise to me to find. Um, and I've been recommending it ever since. Wow. That's great. It's 2014 too, so it's already got a few years in the bottle. That's correct, oh, yeah. It's going to be amazing, I bet. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. So our third is the Hugging Tree. Great. So, Hugging Tree. That's awesome. I've been to this winery. Ah. <laughs> Do I say it? <laughs> say Dare it. I say it? There. Brad, you're so hot. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Why did is. That? I mean, you'd even think so. I, I'm sure. <laughs> I think you would. Really, he is. And then he's, he got to see him on the tractor. You'll be done. Okay, okay. Anyway, let's talk about the wine. Back to the wine, back okay. to the wine. Okay. <laughs> so we've chosen the Telltale, which is their, um, their red blend. Um, and this is a this is a really nice bottle of wine. Mm. Um, like we were saying, Brad, he's the winemaker. Um, Make peace is his last name, um, and they practice all organic um, farming. And you know they have they grow vegetables, and they're really they're trying to be like one with the land. I would say oh, that's so Bill. That's so <laughs> it is. Yeah. yeah so um, I think that this would be a you know. And Brad's a, great... a musician, right? Yes. Yeah. Brad is also oh, a musician. Cool. Wow. So. Awesome. Yeah. Lots, of, lots of coincidences yes. there, I yeah, think. Yeah, there are a few. I, I think this is a winner, really. It feels I like it's, it's perfect. Perfect for Bill with yeah. the organic side of it and the family run and Brad being a musician. Mm -hmm. I just, 
I can't think of a better um, pairing for Bill Henderson awesome. of Chilliwack. Okay, so the Hugging Tree Telltale. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a winner. Yay. Perfect. I love Perfect. it. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> on my way Thanks to you I'm much obliged For such a pleasant stay but Now it's time for me to go
All right, Bill Henderson. I'm so excited. This is a big day for me. So nice to be here with you. I hope it's big for you too. Oh, it's so just big. Little, just I'm a little so big. Excited. <laughs> <laughs> I have, uh, as you know, been a fan of yours for, for a long time and um, since recording your song, yeah. uh, I feel that we have this connection. Yeah, And uh, nice. when you said yes to do this show, it just really, really made my day, made the band's day. They're, they're all, you know, everybody loves you, Bill. Uh, it's true. So there's so much to talk about. You've done so much. Before we do that, though, as you know, this is a wine show. Yes. Yeah. So we went to Cole Harbor Liquor Store downtown on Pender Street, and there was a really beautiful young girl, Evelyn, who, um, she's in her 30s, I think, and I said, so do, do you know who Bill Henderson is from Chilliwack? And she's like, mm, no, I don't, I don't know who that guy is. I said, okay, fair enough, but we'll, you know, we'll, Jeff and I were telling him all about you, you're a rock star, and you've been in the business for all these years, and all these things, and I said, well, you know what, I happen to have one of his songs on my phone, I'm gonna play it for you. So. I played the song, and as soon as she heard the first four bars of Fly at Night, she goes, I know that guy! <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yes! Well, it changed everything. She was so excited going through the store and, and was oh, all it, really on it. And it was just so yeah. cute, and I just loved it so much. So we went, uh, we're staying with BC Wine for this season. Yeah. Uh, we want to stay local and support our local family. So here's the really cool thing about this wine. It's just out of a soyuz, and I was doing a gig there last summer, and on the way back, I thought, I'm hitting some wineries. Yeah. And I saw this hugging tree sign, and I went in. Turns out the young winemaker is a musician, and he's probably in his 40s, really hot in his 40s, and he's got a, a really beautiful <laughs> wife and two small children. Did I say that out loud to you? Yeah, you did, yeah. I yeah, shouldn't have good. said that to good. you. I like that. That's great. <laughs> and he's got a, his mom and dad own the winery, so it's a really yeah. small family driven winery, and that was really lovely. Well, it's hot in a suyus. It's hot in a suyus. You know. <laughs> That's right. That's what I meant. Yeah, I know. That's what I meant. I knew that. <laughs> so yeah. Brad, I sat in his, uh, they have little, you know, tasting rooms and things, and I sat there, just to him and I, because there was nobody there that day, talking about their wine, yeah. and that I was going to do the show. He doesn't even know this. He, he, it was, this is so exciting. Um, and that I was pairing wine with musicians, and he says, well, I'm a, I'm a, I play in a band, and da-da-da. So that was really cool. So I go to, then I go to Cole Harbor liquor store, and as soon as I walk in, there's two electric guitars on the wall. And I was like, hmm. this is the store I'm going to pair Bill with, because it was just yeah. rock you know, yeah, yeah. guitars. So then when we got to all the different wines, Hugging Tree, as soon as I saw it, I thought, oh my god, I was there. And Brad, Brad's a guitar player. I said, this kind of have to do it. We have to pair this with Bill. Right. So, so in the making of this wine, there's music vibes going into it. Yeah. It's full bodied. It rocks. Oh, yeah. Is that a good description? Okay, that sounds good. Okay, we're going to try it. The Hugging Tree. That's Hugging of, Tree. Hugging Tree is kind of salt spring, it's, hippie like. You know. Right? I've done that. Yes, I'm sure you have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I can tell you already this is a great wine. Made with a lot of love. Okay, we're, we're, here's what you do, Bill. You got to kind of swirl it around. Oh, yeah. I'm giving you a lesson right now. You know I'm a beer guy. I know you're a beer guy. Yeah. We're going to convert you. Many have tried. <laughs> Many have tried. <laughs> then what you do is you're going to smell it. Okay. And then you take a little sip. Mm. Oh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is big. I find it's that. full-bodied. Yeah, and I like that. Yeah, Good. I do like that. The rich... Yeah, this thing, has been yeah. open for about an hour because they say you know you gotta let wine breathe. So the, right. I said the, the longer it's open, the, the more it opens up. Right. That's an expression. Right. Just remember all this, okay? It, okay. Next time you're at a party, okay. Say, have you had that breathing? Is it because we need it to open up? You're gonna look so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really right. be a bigger right. rock star. Oh, okay. it's, it's such a thing. It's such a thing. We're gonna get comfortable and we're gonna talk about you. You okay with that? Yep. <laughs> all of a sudden the red wine. Been there, done that. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we begin? Uh, the Collectors. Let's start there. Okay. 1966. Six. 66. That's when my brother was born. I was born in 62. Right. And you're playing in a signed band. Well, we weren't signed until uh, 60, 67. Oh, yeah. So signed this is all like the Beatles time. Were you a Beatles fan? Oh, yeah. That's what got me back into rock and really? roll. Really? See, I started with Elvis. Like, that's what woke me up to music was Elvis. You know, really? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, this is yeah. Yeah. Oh, that rhythm shit. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> I love that stuff. Yeah. Anyways, um, and the Jordanaires, whew. 
killer. So, uh, but that died after a while. It was You know what it was? Southern rural music with electric guitar. Mm. That's what got turned my crank. Mm. The stuff from New York and Philadelphia and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's okay. Mm -hmm. But that's what I really liked. And it kind of went away. Mm -hmm. uh, and at that point, I got into jazz and I got into folk music. And then I went to UBC and I got into classical music. And then somebody wow. said, you ever heard of the Beatles? And I went, what do you think of the Beatles? They said, I was hitchhiking back <laughs> home. And I said, what do you think of the Beatles? What's the Beatles? No way. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so... I never really got into them until Hard Day's Night, and Hard Day's Night, I went to see Hard Day's Night, and that was it. At that point, the classical guitar went under the bed, and the electric came out oh. that I hadn't played for a long, long time, wow. and I started writing songs right away. Really? So, yeah. And by yourself, or did you... Yeah, by myself. At first, how I didn't have a band. It took... Well, I was... I don't know how old I was. I was 22. 21, 21, 22, something like that. I can't remember exactly, but... Anyway, you know... That was, they were, they, they took so many different kinds of music and put them together. And, and what I love, because I studied classical music, which took you all the way to John Cage, where you weren't really sure it was even music at all, uh, and through all of this stuff, and you, and you started hearing, that here were these rock guys that were using that stuff. They were putting it all together. Mm. And it was so exciting. Was a great time. It blew my mind. Yeah. I just loved it, right? So mm. that was it. Mm -hmm. You know, there was this shot was fired and it kind of went like this. So yeah. We're coming down around here now. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever see them live? No. 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 They, they didn't even play for that long, did they? Like, no, not very long. It's, it's hard to believe when you, there's so many hits. Yeah. They had such an impact on music and yeah. they only played for a couple of years. Like. Yeah. And they were, you know, they really did their dues mm -hmm. in the clubs yeah. when, they, uh, when they were starting, when they were, were young. But, you know, people like McCartney, I mean, oh my God. The talent is just outrageous, yeah. and the background with, I guess, with his dad and his family, whatever. I don't know. I I, I hadn't studied them, you know. I no. just their music just blew my mind. That's yeah. all I know. <laughs> and the thing about the Beatles, I and mean, then there was Pete Best was in the band before yep. Ringo, <clears throat> and I think you can't deny that once that magical four got together, it was what it was. Yeah. You know, sometimes you can't remove one person, and then it loses. It's like it's this vibration that happens, right? A collective. Yeah. Vibration. You never know. You never know. Yeah. 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 It's hard to say with that kind of stuff. Yeah. And Ringo was so unique. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He was, a, he was a star. He was yeah. a star. Yeah. Yeah. So the Collectors, uh, was it just a couple of years, right? Yeah. Three years, I think. We, yeah. we did two albums and we wrote the music for the uh, Canadian Pavilion at Expo 70 in Japan. All the music for the Pavilion wow. was written by the band. And you can hear it on Air Canada. <laughs> at this very time <laughs> on there. You know, if you go if you go to Documentaries, uh, National <laughs> Film Board, fantastic. there's one there called The Land. And that's music you. Music by the Collectors. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. How yeah, did that happen? Pretty cool. Yeah, it was a lot of... They just, did they just choose it or did you pitch it or what, how did that work? Uh, they chose us. We, we were like, at that point, we were notorious. We were like um, very well known for a band that had hardly been around any length of time right. because we did things that were really unusual. I mean, Randy Bachman talked about it uh, on his uh, his radio program and talked about how while they were making singles, we were making concept albums, you know, the collectors oh. were making concept albums. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it was just where we were at, mm -hmm. right? And it was a little, it was a little outside and, uh, you know, yeah. Back, you could do that then. It was like Fleetwood Mac before the girls, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. I think that's the part I think I'm, I'm mourning the most about music now is, yeah. That, yeah, I was saying to somebody just the other day, there's no more guitar solos in songs anymore. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And we were, I just didn't say we. I think but you saw the best of it. I think am it I, was, I, I think it was great and yeah. I loved it and I'm not, you know, super tuned in to the new stuff and yeah. that's, it's okay. I'm yeah. old. It's fine. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm, I'm having a good time. Yeah, you are having a good time. You know, You're that's still the thing. really busy. Yeah. So then you, there's yeah. Chilliwack, yeah. and uh, oh my God, so many hits. Well, the thing that that um, that I wanted to mention, okay, was there was a time when this fellow I know said to me that you know he said uh, when I was young I uh, I was a musician and I, I was trying to decide what I was going to do with it, mm -hmm. and I realized that blues, if I played blues, I'd be able to play it until I was really old, it would still be okay to play it. You know, and I always had that thought on my mind too, but here I am in my mid seventies, I'm not playing blues. 
No, you're I'm a rock playing, star. I'm playing rock, pop, rock, whatever yeah. you want to call it, except it classic up. rock, right? What an amazing thing. It is amazing. Blows my mind. I want to have a drink. Yeah, let's, let's have Let's do one. it. I think that's amazing. Toast, a toast to that. <laughs> and you don't look and you're, like you're in your 70s. The makeup girl today was so shocked. There's no way. It's <laughs> true. Mm. Okay. So. So all these hits. I mean, it was fantastic. And so Tilawak, that's what, 40 years now? We're at 49 years. What? Yeah, next year will be our 50th anniversary. Oh my God. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, that's, that's kind, amazing. Of a, kind of bizarre. And yeah. so you've had Junos and all kinds of awards. And you're also a member uh, Order of Canada. Order of yeah. Canada. What yeah. an honor. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. yeah I was and so you're not just a musician. Honor. I don't mean to say just a musician. You're, you're, your life is very big and busy because you were president of the SOCAN for yeah. how, how long? Oh, I was president for two years. Two years, yeah. I was on the board for 23 years. 23 years. Yeah. So yeah. you're you got your hands in a lot of the different things. Um, yeah. I. You know what? I, I'll tell you what happened there. That that came in '79. That was my when I joined the SoCan board. Mm -hmm. So by then, uh, Chilliwack had been around for nine. Was it nine years? <laughs> yeah. Oh no, it was '89. That's right. So 19 years. That's that's right. So uh, and. I'd been inside of lots of oak panel boardrooms, mm -hmm. and and there was always this vibe coming from the other side of the desk, and that, that for me anyway, in my little world, that's what I got. I got this thing, and I felt like I was very other. You know right. that I, I there was something it, it didn't fit. You know, mm -hmm. it's like they had all the power. They had all, so I went. And the SoCan thing came along and went, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into one of those boardrooms and I'm going to see how it works mm -hmm. and I'm going to see what I can do wow. there, you know. And, and, uh, and then it ended up being a thing where what was imp I had to find out first what my job actually was. That took a couple <laughs> of years. But, uh, but I realized that my job was to represent writers. Songwriters. Yeah, right? Songwriters Association, for those who don't know what SOCAN is. Yes. It's, okay. it's, it's, yeah, SOCAN uh, represents writers and publishers. Mm -hmm. So people who make the music and people who own the music. Right. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so once I understood that, I just took what I believed the writer's life was about from my own experience and from, you know, talking to other people and stuff, mm -hmm. and, and always tried to bring that to the fore, right. you know, and make that, make that the place where the organization uh, acts from. You That's know. fantastic. So yeah. I, uh, I tried to do that did and I really enjoyed it. Enjoy it. I really enjoyed you it did. very much. Yeah. Wow. And By the end, I was getting tired, so yeah. I quit. Yeah. Good. I mean, you yeah. served us all. So it must be really different for you with the Spotify and how music is mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. you know, because, again, it's just you saw the best of it, I think. And the Songwriters mm -hmm. Association had, uh, a, a, they, we had a plan for all of this. You did. And the plan was that we would use the SOCAN model, right. which was a model where the writer gets 50 percent, right. where the, the creative side gets at least 50 percent mm -hmm. unless they're that big in the business that they can command more right that's the starting point right and we had a way that that would work and everyone in the country bought into it except for the three major companies three oh. major labels wow they had another plan wow and now we see what that, that, plan, what that was. plan was yeah it's yeah. so different yeah. so different not good um so when you were not rocking and rolling mm -hmm. up there uh, and you're at home in Salt Spring. I, there's a rumor out there that you chop wood. <laughs> <laughs> I do. And you chop wood and you- I chop you, a lot of and wood. And you chop the wood in the summertime for the next winter, right? Well, yes, I, I, have, to, I have to gather the wood in the spring mm -hmm. and also through the winter. You can do that because you can't operate a chainsaw in the summertime. On right. Salt Spring, oh, it's too dangerous. Oh, it's dangerous. Fires. Oh, okay. Fires, right? You're noise. not allowed to work really? with, with a, a chainsaw okay. in the woods. Period. So you got to have it all cut first. And you heat and your house with wood. We heat our house with wood. So love. Yeah. So uh, you know, do that uh -huh. in, in when there's rain and that, and then split, split the do stuff. Do you have a wood in splitter? That, that. No. Oh come on. No, no. You split it all yourself? Well, me and some some other guys. <laughs> me and that other guy. We <laughs> We split the wood, so, but, but I'm an expert. I'll tell you, you should have brought me some wood to split. <laughs> we had a wood splitter. 
we heated our yeah. house with wood when we were kids. Yeah. And uh, dad, you know, we'd go out with him in the, in the, in the woods and he'd have the chainsaw. And, yep. Uh, but I remember when we got the wood splitter, it was a really big deal. Yeah. It was like, uh, like wow, check that out. Yeah. Um, but so this is how you stay fit, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then your wife is a gardener. She's really good very with the. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you do. You, are you pretty much living organically, or? Yeah, very much. I yeah. love that. Yeah. I really love that. Yeah. We lived in a teepee in the seventies. Did you know <laughs> <I'm> that? Sorry. <laughs> did you really? We did. A teepee. We did. Come a teepee. on. Yeah, in on Salt Spring Island. We lived on Salt Spring for three years in the seventies. <laughs> And then it got so that, you know, if I was going to be in the music industry, I couldn't stay in a teepee. Stop it wasn't it. going to work. <laughs> so we went to Vancouver for 20 years. Where'd you put your guitar amps? I didn't have them there. I don't even know where they were. <laughs> oh, my I'm not God. Sure. You I really lived in a teepee. I don't believe you. No, yeah, Are you absolutely. Serious? This isn't a joke. Well, I can tell you something. Okay. I'll prove it to you. <laughs> if you live in a teepee you know, <laughs> and it rains... <laughs> You got a hole in the middle of your roof. <laughs> you got a problem. You know, you got all these sticks sticking out of it. But man, it's raining and it's coming down the sticks and it's dropping on your head, right? So what you do is you go around to each one of those poles and you catch the rain on the pole and you draw it down with your finger like this to mm -hmm. the bottom. You and then like it doesn't tunnel. on you anymore. And you do it on each of the 18 poles <laughs> and then you're set. How long did it take you to figure that out? <laughs> <laughs> I don't recall. <laughs> I think we read it in a book. So how, book, how big was it? Like, did you have a couch in there? 18 feet. A couch? No. We a had, like, we, had gunny, we had gunny sacks <laughs> stuffed with wool from sheep <laughs> because my, my <laughs> you're having fun in this. I can't you are believe this. <laughs> um, because my wife's dad was a beekeeper and he would use the old uh, Northern European style beehives where you, you get a gunny sack and you fill it with lambs or sheep wool mm -hmm. and use it as insulation because mm. you keep the bees warm in the winter mm. time. So, and he had like 50 hives. So, and he, he basically retired and we got all these hives and we had these gunny sacks and we, and, and they were stuffed and they were, they're made perfectly fine mattresses when you sewed two or three of them together. You're amazing. Yeah. And we had I can't two believe this. we had two daughters. At yes, that time. you're Saffron beautiful and Camille. daughters. Beautiful. And they, you had the two daughters in the teepee? Yeah. Oh my yes. god. Yes. One of them learned to Saf walk. Saff never in the told teepee. me that. She doesn't she's not all that proud. <laughs> my why. dad, I was raised in a teepee. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? A teepee life. I love is something you know what? I like the sound of a teepee that life. Everyone should experience. Yeah. Because once you experience it, you find out what being connected to yeah. the land actually is. I mean, I'm laughing, but I really I know, think I it's know. beautiful. It's really cool. I didn't know this about you. You yeah. know, it's funny because it brings me back to when we did a show uh, at the Rio, Chris for Chris Meister. Right. Um, and I was there with my red pants. And you said to me, hey, I used to have a pair of pants like that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> it kind of makes sense now with the whole TP story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. Did you, you sell those from Lambswool? I didn't, I didn't wear the, once we moved to the TP, I graduated to <laughs> denim. <laughs> I graduated the denim, but prior to that, I was wearing stuff like that oh, around, you know, Fourth Avenue, you know. Oh. And it, and, and my, so... my my wife, she sewed them. Oh God, she this made is like a Loretta Lynn story. And and they were like, she made me these these pumpkin orange <laughs> wide whale corduroy <laughs> bell bottoms that were phenomenal. All right, all right, bell bottoms are fun. They're yeah. they're, they're rock yeah. and roll. Yeah. So I wore these today for you. You did? Oh, I did. You. Yeah, they're, they're, they're incredible. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. They're incredible. You probably they're fit beautiful into them, color. It's an amazing Atlantic color. If you like. <laughs> we're the same size, I think. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Okay, so we're going to do a song together. Now, I really need to tell everybody this story because a lot of people may not know. When we did Rewind, the album Rewind, and we recorded Fly at Night, yeah. and John Ellis, we were all, you know, the record was done, and he said, wouldn't it be cool if we could get Bill Henderson to come and do something? We thought you might sing a part of it or whatever. I don't know. You may not remember this, but we sent you the MP3, and you you really liked it, which I was, whew, thank God, because you I know that you don't you always guys, like what you hear. Well, um, good job. And so you were delighted to come, and you decided, how about I just play guitar? And so I remember at at the studio when you were setting everything up and getting ready. For me, sitting in the control room watching you play. Your solo on mm. my version of your song, I was done. <laughs> Bill, like, honestly, I felt like, okay, this is it. I don't need to do anything else in my career. This is it right here. <laughs> it was amazing. And then I remember oh, we went to the SoCan nice. event that night, and, and I was happened to be standing beside someone, and you were telling somebody, oh, my goodness. Yeah, Taylor, I was just in studio. Taylor recorded my song. And you yeah. seemed happy about it. And, yeah. and that just made my whole day. Yeah. And guess what we're going to do today? No, what? Fly at night. <laughs> no, you're kidding me. <laughs> and you know what? I had to relearn it. 
because I totally changed it. I didn't even know I did. I learned. Did you? I, I did. You have to Why listen didn't to I my version that? again. You didn't notice? So I'm listening to your all. version. I'm like, oh, what my God. I, have to, I had to play guitar for the last two days every day to get your parts down, like the way your brother plays the acoustic. it. The acoustic? The acoustic part. I totally play it different. Oh. But now I play it the way you do. Oh. I can't wait. Okay. Good. Are you excited? Good. Yeah, I look forward to it. I hope you're excited. We're all it's really gonna excited. Fun. It's oh, going to be yeah. totally cool. It's going to be Okay, alive. we're going to have one more drink of wine. Okay. Okay, we're going to toast to right. Old Harbor Liquor Store, who paired this wine for you. Right. And we're going to thank Evelyn. Beautiful Evelyn. Oh, thank and you, Evelyn. And Hugging Old Tree Harbor. in uh, Brad mm -hmm. on his tractor and his little family. Yeah. <laughs> That's The rock star nice. Brad. It That's is nice. nice yeah. It's nice. It fits with all your stories. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, there Bill. Cheers. Love to have you here. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're Dave. welcome. Satisfied, see the morning from the other side. And when you close your eyes, sleep comes fast. When you fly the universe, well, yeah, you need some rest, yeah, yeah. You need some rest. Faces. Yeah, we like to see your faces Time is just a rubber band Time is at our command And when we look out and see you there You see much closer, yeah
fly at night, it was satisfied. See the morning from the other side.